thank you, Brandon. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about like the patterns that we use at Kickstarter in both of our native apps. Um, we don't have a lot of Kotlin in production right now, but you're probably familiar with Kotlin. It's a fairly new language for the JVM. Uh, it's somewhat similar to Swift, like in the syntax, and it's sort of like Swift is to Objective-C as Kotlin is to uh, Java. So we would like to start using more of it. So um, I will go through the patterns that we use in the native apps at Kickstarter, uh, and then build a little echo program in Kotlin using those patterns. Uh, okay, so why Kotlin? Android, uh, you have to use Java 6. Um, I don't know the exact details of what was changed, but something in Java 7, the bytecode uh, that is run on the JVM was changed. So like, uh, for those of you that like, aren't super familiar, like at a high level, uh, Java is turned into bytecode that is run on a Java virtual machine, right? And uh, in Java 7, they changed how some of the types are represented. So for Intel, like all the manufacturers of Android devices uh, change uh, how they represent on the JVM, um, we can't be, we can't use Java 7 or Java 8 in Android. Uh, so that means we have to do a lot of messy things because Java 6 doesn't have a lot of features that uh, we would like. Uh, and these, so also uh, the, op the native apps are open source at Kickstarter, thanks to Brandon and Lisa and Steven. Um, so you can go look at these patterns afterwards or look at our code. But there's a couple of examples in the uh, Android app that are kind of, that kind of illustrate uh, the messy things that we have to do uh, in Java 6. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, so this is a comparator that Lisa and I wrote. And we just needed to sort a list of integers by descending order and like, <laughs> Yeah, we have to have like a util to do that for us and like uh, have a comparator object. And then uh, you can like, this logic is pretty self-explanatory. Like the ternary is not too bad, but like, you know, in inheriting from uh, like an interface just to sort a list by descending order was kind of a lot of work. And then uh, this area is where we use it, um, but as you can see, it's like, so uh, yeah, this is just like sorting these objects by a certain attribute of the object in descending order. It's just an integer. But you can see that's like a lot of work to do that that would probably be like, you know, one line, one line in uh, a lot of other modern, modern languages. Um, so Kotlin has stuff like that built in, which is nice. Uh, so the pattern that we use, um, I, don't, I don't know if there's a definitive name for it, but uh, I've been calling it MVVM. I think uh, one of my colleagues, Stephen, was telling me that there's maybe some other associations with this term in the iOS community that maybe I'm not familiar with. But basically, uh, it just refers to model view, view model. And um, in this conception of it, the models are just business objects like uh, JSON you get from an API or a, um, something that you got from a database. Views are where you want your side effects to happen. So uh, adding elements to the screen or um, doing, yeah, any, any user interface update you want to happen in the view. But uh, all of the logic for what kind of user interface update you want to do uh, can happen in the view model, uh, and it's extracted from the view to make it more testable. Um, right, so uh, I've been using, I've been thinking about this pattern a lot lately, uh, partially because I was, as Brandon said, I was working on the back end in a, our Rails app at Kickstarter, and uh, something that we were constantly trying to do was to not have logic in our views because it's super hard to test. I don't know if y'all have ever written like um, integration tests to check if a certain HTML element is showing up on the screen for a certain you know, user path, 
but those tests are super flaky, they suck to write, they're, they take a long time to run, um, and so a lot of times people just don't end up doing them. Uh, so I've seen this in Rails, I've also seen this in JavaScript. We've started using uh, GraphQL at Kickstarter, which is great, it gives us types on the API and sort of like locks us into uh, a certain structured way of doing things, but even there, we've sort of like pushed our bad habits to the front end. So we have a large JavaScript app on the front end that uses React and Redux, but we've started putting, view log uh, putting logic into our views there and not testing it there. So it's like we all, we just make the same mistakes in every language and like every framework and uh, the native apps at Kickstarter uh, follow this pattern pretty rigorously and I, I feel like it gives us a lot of test coverage and it's really easy to separate uh, your logic from your views. Uh, cool, so the other uh, thing that we use in the native apps at Kickstarter is um, functional reactive programming or just reactive programming. Um, so, those of you that aren't familiar with it, there's just like a couple of small concepts. Um, the like key unit of reactive programming is an observable. Um, I don't know if Swift has a similar concept built in. I know Ruby has something called an observable. Um, no. Uh, so it's also like an iterator in Python. It sort of keeps track of where you are in a collection uh, and you can subscribe to it and get like the next value every time that you call a certain method on, the, on an observable. Um, and then another like core concept is a subject which sort of apps, uh, acts like an observable but also can observe other things. So you can have uh, things watching for the values that are emitted by a subject and you can also have uh, a subject watching an observable to consume the values that are emitted by uh, another observable. Um, that is not it, but we're going to switch away <laughs> from slides. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, I thought it might be helpful to build a little echo program in Kotlin. Um, so we don't actually have a lot of logic in the Kickstarter app in Kotlin. I think we just have like a few classes. Uh, Lisa added an either class and we have like a few enums in Kotlin, but um, nothing significant like uh, no activities and view models. So um, I just decided to take a stab at uh, using Rx Kotlin and uh, following the view model pattern in Kotlin. Uh, okay, so I'll play this really quickly. This uh, is just a blank screen right now. Um, I have a layout with a basic plain text input and uh, I'm not sure we're even using this at the moment. So yeah, right now it's just a blank screen with uh, plain text input, I'll show you that. Oh, I need to move my emulator over, sorry. Cool. Uh, so this is, a, I just built this into the Kickstarter app, but this is the screen here. Cool, so plain text input, you can type and hit enter and nothing happens. So uh, to start, um, we want to maybe do something when the user types into the plain text input and hits enter. Uh, so that is the code that we already have bound or uh, commented out here. So um, I left this in because it's a little bit messy and uh, I think it's not really that interesting. This is just how you do like an on key uh, listener in Kotlin and you can see it's listening for someone to hit the enter key, and so here's where we do something with the value. Um, so we have a view model over here, empty, empty init function, um, and since we, sorry, I'm, the mirroring is throwing me off. Uh, so in this pattern, 
we just want to take the values that are given in by the user and pass them to our, our view model and then the view model does whatever it wants with it, right? We don't want to do any mutations, any like logic in our activity over on the right. Uh, we want to push all of that logic over to the uh, activity view model over on the left. So uh, we need a place for uh, the input whenever it comes from the activity. And we can start by adding an input. Um, so we can have an observable or let's oh text input. Okay. And so this I'm going to make a uh, I'm actually going to make this a subject so. You can imagine uh, we might want to do a lot of things with this when it comes in from the user, like this whole screen could be based off of this one input. So uh, making it a published subject allows multiple observables or like think of them as actions. Uh, it allows multiple observables to subscribe to this one subject. Um, So that's just giving me an error because it's not initialized. Uh, so we can initialize it here. <laughs> Sorry, it's really hard to type <laughs> when you're looking sideways. OK, cool. So now we're good. And over here, we can just trigger it. and. Nothing is uh, actually going to happen because it's just a subject and nothing is subscribing to it yet. Cool. Whatever, I'll worry about that in a minute. Um, okay, so we want to do something with uh, this input from the user, right? Uh, I think maybe one initial place to start is just to clear the data here. Uh, like whenever someone hits submit, we want to like wipe it clean so they can submit the next thing, right? Uh, so we can do that with an observer that will subscribe to the subject. Okay. So uh, let's call it should clear text input. Cool, no typos. Uh, and that can just be a Boolean that's emitted by uh, our view model. And then we can subscribe to it in our activity. And the activity can uh, serve to do the whatever side effects we want to do, which is like clear, clearing the input here. So we can do should clear text input. and just make it emit true when uh, that's not right. Cool. I might need to import something. Yeah. Okay. So this will just take the this will this observable will emit whenever uh, this published subject up here uh, receives a value. And we don't actually care about the value since we're just clearing. This is just going to be a Boolean output. Um, we can just emit true whenever we see that uh, our published subject up here has received a value. Um, cool. So uh, it's hard to see if I have compilation errors. I think I do somewhere up there. Uh, here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, so I need a function to allow us to input into our view model. Okay. Yeah, all right, 
cool. So this will allow us to uh, subscribe to this output in our activity. Um, and I'm getting an error because I don't have a function over here for us to subscribe to. There's dot text input. Cool. We good? Okay, let's make sure it still runs. And we're not subscribing to the output yet uh, in our activity on the right. So nothing will actually happen, uh, but we can start coding up the subscription. So uh, the side effects that we want to happen in our activity or view over on the right is we just want to clear the input from uh, the text view. So we can, we have our edit text element up here and we have this output from the view model. So we can just call view model dot should clear text input and subscribe with a simple Lambda, again, we don't really care about the values here because we already know what we're doing. So we can just set text to an empty string. Um, there may be a method to just clear, but I don't know about it, so. Uh, okay, so let's run again and make sure we clear our values from the Android emulator. something in. Nice. Ooh. So now we clear the text. And um, yeah, <laughs> it worked. Uh, yeah, so I think this actually, this is like one of my favorite things about this pattern is um, even though we're not using the value that's inputted by the user, we can just listen to a simple Boolean and be like, clear this text whenever this Boolean is emitted we don't care what the user entered, and like it's it's totally separate from whatever logic um, you we would want to follow with the actual value that's input by the user. Um, but let's try doing something. Let's just try echoing back uh, the value that we get in the text input. Uh, so we can start with. Um, A new observable. Um, a screen output, and that will be a string. Uh, and then So we can just take the value that is given by this published subject and then emit it right back. So we're just taking the value from the activity and giving it right back. Um, you know, in real life, if this wasn't just an echo program, we could do whatever transformations we want on that value and then echo it right back. But um, for our purposes here, let's just not do any transformations. No. And this is just uh, a function that returns a string. Cool. Mm -mm. Uh, I actually don't think I do. I <laughs> guess we'll find out. Uh, and then, yeah, so that's all of the logic that we need in our view model there to echo it back to the activity. And then we want to do whatever side effects we want over in the activity. Uh, so 
I showed this like very basic layout that we have. We have um, something called a linear layout in Android. Uh, I don't know what the equivalent is in iOS. Stack view, right. Um, so we can just add a text view to that linear layout. Um, let's see, I don't have it bound yet. Okay, so we can subscribe to the output. Uh, and so to, this will be our text that the user entered. Um, there's a little bit of a messy uh, way of adding a text view in uh, Android. So I'm just gonna copy that method from my notes. Oops. Uh, so this is just a function, this is like making layout params, which is telling it to match the parent and wrap the content, making a new text view, setting the text on the new text view, uh, finding the layout, and then adding the view to the layout. It's like pretty standard, but uh, so we can just use that method uh, to add Still using Java syntax, even though I'm in Kotlin. Cool. Sure. Oh yeah. Probably not. Yeah. Should be fine. Um, Actually, I'm going to add parentheses to both. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not positive what idiomatic Kotlin looks like. As I said, we're fairly new to this. Okay, so uh, we're just taking the value that is given by our uh, observable in the uh, from the user, and then echoing it back to the view, and then doing our side effects here. Um, you could imagine this add new text view could be like a standardized method somewhere, somewhere that just takes like a text view and a string and you know maybe it could be tested but for our purposes here I think this should be fine. Oops. Did it want to return? I don't know what that was. Yeah, yeah, I think you put it on turning it into a view. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is actually way faster. This computer is brand new. Okay, cool. So let's see if we add our text view successfully. Nice. Woo. Okay. <laughs> cool. um, and the last thing that I want to show is how easy it is to test whenever you're extracting your logic over into a view model. So we'll try to get a successful test going real quick. And I think the easiest way to do that is probably to uh, move this over here so we can see the objects that we're testing. So um, test um, screen output is like our one uh, value that's outputted from the view model. So you, we can just test that a, a string that we pass in is echoed back to us 
through this output, right? Uh, so what? All right, and so this is going to be uh, not functional. We're going to mutate a string here because I don't have testing tools at my disposal. But uh, in in iOS and in uh, Android right now, we have like test observables that you can subscribe to outputs. Um, we don't have that in Kotlin yet, so I'm just going to mutate a string. But um, cool, so we'll use this to aggregate our output um, and we can make a new view model. Uh, and then we want to input to our view model uh, some string. And then we want to subscribe our uh, to our view model with a lambda um, output. And then we can just add it to our output aggregator. Sorry for not being functional. <laughs> okay, and then, uh, yeah, so we just want to trigger the input here. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, we want to assert. Right, yeah, VM text input. We want to subscribe before we input. And then assert equals uh, output aggregator. String. Let's see if we can do this. I'm going to remove the space. Oh, yeah, good call. Thank you. Okay, let's see if we can do it. You think it'll pass? No. Oh. It said <laughs> output aggregator equals output aggregator plus. Oh. Really? Or, or plus equals. Yeah. yeah, I don't actually know if Kotlin has a plus equals. Lisa, do you know? Let's see. Nice, nice. Takes me back to Python. Okay. Cool. So even if this doesn't pass, you can see how easy it is to test something like that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So that's the basic pattern, uh, extracting all of your logic to a view model. Uh, and then it makes it a lot easier to test. And that's all. And I think I went a little over. So maybe find me with questions later. <laughs> Thanks.